So I have this situation in my game at the moment where I have these portals, right? And see how it has this begin text over the top of it? Um, oops, where the fuck did I just end up? My problem is that I can see them like through the floor and I don't want to be able to see them through the floor. Um, and the way that the begin text toggles, its visibility is toggled depending on an overlap with my character. So I have a character like, I'll show my character. In the viewport, see this big overlap volume? Whenever that overlaps another actor, it's doing an interface check with the actor um, to see if it has anything that it needs to do based on how close the player is. So for example, with the world teleporter, when it begins overlap with the player, this volume on the player, um, the visibility toggles on and off of the destination because I don't want you to be a thousand million units away and be able to see all the way off in the distance like a widget on the screen saying, um, like, finish here or something. And it's like a big text, you know. Um, it doesn't scale with the distance, so that's what this, ch this visibility thing is for. When you begin overlap or end overlap with an actor, you update this, are we relevant now or are we irrelevant now, Try to toggle the visibility. But the problem is that um, I can still see shit through walls and I don't want to be able to see shit through walls. So in this video, I'm just going to quickly um, show you the way that I'm going to do this to make it so that you can't see through walls. I don't even know if that made any sense, but like, look, <laughs> I'm going to build it anyway. So come along with me if you like. But the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new component. I'm going to do this in a component. We need to create a thing that does a visibility check when they become relevant so that we can check if we can see them or not and if we can't see them then hide the text. Um, so in blueprints, it doesn't matter where you put it, but I'm just going to create a new component which is going to be a scene component because I want the transform and I'm going to call this uh, check, oops, what the fuck? That was weird. Where'd my scene, did it even create? Oh my god. I'm not even sure that it created, sorry. Oh my god, my mouse is like freaking out. Uh, blueprint class, new scene component, which I'm going to call uh, check visibility component. Okay. Um, uh, custom A new custom event. Begin checking visibility. I don't actually know how I'm going to do this, by the way, so I'm just sort of freestyling this if you're interested. Um, so we'll have a begin checking visibility and a stop checking visibility event, or they can just be the same thing. So what it can actually be called is uh, toggle checking visibility. Okay. Um, input can be new checking. And you set that to true if you want to begin checking and false if you don't want to be checking. Uh, I'm actually not going to explain a whole lot of this. I'm just going to try and build this and you can just watch along if you're interested. Uh, set time by event. Custom event. Check visibility. Plug that in. Uh, we'll have a tick time as a variable. Looping. Promote this to a um, reference, timer reference. Now, checking visibility, we need to check visibility between the scene component. Um, so, get a reference to self. And we're going to do this with a line trace. So, let's actually put in the line trace. Line trace by channel. The starting location is going to be the world location of the scene. And the end location is going to be... I guess the target. So what we might do is we'll have a get actor. Oh, can I do that? Hang on. Get owner. Get actor location. I just wanted to get owner so that I could get an actor location node without unticking the context thing if that made any sense. But the end is going to be the location of the target. Target to check. Okay. Uh, trace channel, whatever. Uh, actors to ignore. Let's make an array and put in 
the owner, so we do need the get owner node because we don't want to have collisions with ourselves. Um, and we'll promote the debug type to a variable. And tick time is a public variable, De debug time is going to be a public variable, debug type rather. <coughs> um, and if there's a hit, we just want to have a little branch thing off the end. Now, when we begin checking, um, we're going to check if our timer is valid. If it is valid already, let's not create a new one. Um, <clears throat> and first of all, new checking. If we want to begin checking, then that's when we do that. And then if we want to end checking, then what we do is, let me just make a bit of room, I'll put that up there actually. Uh, end checking, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our timer reference and we're just going to clear, clear and invalidate timer by handle. Okay, now let's add some defaults in. Um, tick time can just be 0.2, I don't want it to be too quick, it doesn't really matter. And the debug type, um, let's make that for duration for now so we can see our little lines being scattered across the screen. Oh, my mouse has just been such a bitch at the moment. Now, the target to check, we need to set that as well, so... When we begin checking visibility, if it's set to true, then let's set the target to check then. Okay. Um, so now, if we, if we, in the in-world teleporter, if I add that component, um, check visibility component, we have our settings over there, which seem to be a bit fucked up, that's fine. Actually, not really, they're fine. Um, when we change relevancy, in other words, when this actor, the world teleporter, when this begins overlap with the overlap volume on my player character, this event fires with this, um, what we'll do is instead of setting the visibility here, we will begin checking or what did I call it? Toggle checking visibility, okay? So, whenever this fires, we can actually just put that into there just like that. So, if this event fires and it's now in the volume, then this will be true, this will start checking. Um, and if the reverse case, if we leave, then this will be false, then it'll cancel this. And the target to check is going to be uh, change relevancy to local player. Maybe I should pass through the player there as well. Um, I might do that actually. So, can I open that up? Uh, changed relevancy to local player. New relevancy. Oh god, what did I just do? Don't want that. Well, if it's a local... Hang on, let me, let me just... Let me just back up. This would be easier. Get player controller. Get controlled pawn. Okay? So, yeah, just like that. You could pass a reference through the, for the player through the interface, or you could just get the, the local player. Index zero. Um, okay, so now, this will tell us if we can see it or not. So, what I could do over here is I could have a print string I have a custom print string, it's just, um, it's, a, it's the same thing except it just lasts for 60 seconds and it's a funky colour. I just like that because 60 seconds is so much better than, um, it's so much better than 2 seconds. Like if you've just got a print string for 2 seconds and there's a heap of them, you can't read them all in 2 seconds, it's ridiculous. Okay, so now we're getting a heap of results. Uh, but this one here, so... That one, I think, is returning true, and then there must be some through the ground. Yeah, see the green lines? They're the ones that are actually hitting. So they will be returning false. So you can see that they're all checking. Now, the next thing to do is to update the visibility on a result change. So, um, the way to do that 
and I might reduce that tick time like that's a bit a bit over the top like I really need to check these every second or so especially if there's a lot of them like if you have this for health bars or something um, you don't want the tick time to be too high now let's have a new variable which we will call current can see question mark okay and by default let's just have that set to false and now if the hit value is not equal to the current can see <laughs> I've never done this before this is gonna hurt my head a little bit um, so in other words if the result is changed if the result is changed then what we're going to do is set the new can see to the hit result okay because the new result is going to be different to the old result now when that happens let's have an event dispatcher no because you can't pass information through event dispatchers I don't believe I don't actually know um, actually you know what let's just have an event dispatcher and call this uh, can see result has changed and we're just going to dispatch that event right there when that happens okay so I'm just going to comment everything so this is going to be called toggle checking timer and this is going to be called perform check perform visibility check okay so now in the world teleporter thing um, our check visibility component I can can I how do you add a add event yeah so you can add an event from the event dispatcher um, can see a result has changed okay so that this event down here on fire now I'm gonna put that back up where my destination widget thing was um, so we begin checking when the player enters the overlap and then when the result changes then what we're going to do is toggle the visibility of our overhead widget but because we can't pass a variable through there what I need to do is just grab our component and just get can current can see and plug that into there okay so I'm just going to comment all this and call this toggle visibility of destination widget and you know you can do this for health bars and those are the only two instances I think of where you would do this text for things so if it's like a requirement for a door or a name or of a place or something or a health bar um, do you reckon this will work? let's see I can't see the name maybe did I get it backwards or something? I might have got it backwards and what was my error? was that related to this? no it wasn't um, current can see yeah, that should be should be working. Let's just debug this. Print for me. Um, current can see. And you know what? I'm just going to delete my other teleporters in the world for a second, just so I can debug this with just one. Yeah, yeah, go away. That's fine. Okay, so, what the fuck? Okay, well there's one down here, this will work. What's it say? I think it says death or something. Well, it says that we can see it, so why isn't the visibility showing up? Um, new visibility overworld text. Uh, what if I edit this? Let's have a look at this. It is working. Okay, so it's there because we can see. Well, actually, no, it's hitting, so it shouldn't. It shouldn't be there. <laughs> the hits occurring. So uh, that's because I need to just move the check visibility component up a little bit because otherwise it's just going to be colliding with the ground. This is why I wanted it as a scene component so that you could get it to to move. Now perform the check. Okay, so there's. There's no hit, 
so if there's no hit if there's no hit if there's no hit um, current can see it. this is the around the wrong way because if there's a hit then you cannot see right <laughs> So it should be around the other way. Um, so now, if I just put in a big old cube to act as a wall, okay. Now perform the check. Bitch, come on. All right. Ah, oh, because the result changed. Okay. So now it can't see. Now if I step out. It's always returning false, no matter what. I wonder why. I think I've just confused myself. Um, if the hit is different... Oh, hang on. Yeah, this is this is wrong. This is wrong, 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 wrong. Um, so let's just call this blocking hit instead of can see, because that's just getting confusing. Okay, so... If the hit result is equal to blocking hit, then do nothing. Um, but if it's not equal, then what we'll do is set the new blocking hit to this, and then we'll fire the event dispatcher. Okay, and then back in the world teleporter. God, bullions, man, they just, they hurt my fucking head, like when it's like a knot and gnaw, or like it's just back and forward and inside out and just so confusing. Okay, so if there's a blocking hit, then we want it to be not visible. Okay? And I think straight up, uh, I might have to set like a oh fuck it let's just see what happens okay now I've got a feeling if I go behind here uh, there's a blocking hit and then if I come back out it works so the thing that needs to happen is the blocking hit by default I think should be true the blocking hit by default should be true so we'll assume there's a wall in the way at the start and then on the first tick there we go. Now if I go behind again, it blocks it, and then it's back. So now, if I put this other one upstairs, the other teleporter upstairs, um, I won't be able to see them through the floor anymore. So... Oh, let me turn my snapping on. Boom. Just there. I'll have another one over there. Oops, how did my snapping just turn off? Did I turn that off by myself? Oh, it was never on to begin with, God. What the fuck? That's not even the thing that I wanted, Jesus. Oh, good God. All right, look, you can be there and you can be just under there. Now look, let's play. And they don't actually have names, so let's let's give them a name. Uh, teleporter. And I'll just duplicate you and put one under the ground. Teleporter. And the one under, yeah, it doesn't have a name on top. Because otherwise you'd see the name right there, where it says Redstone Temple Ultimate Fighter. There'd be a fucking name showing through the floor. And you can't see the other one down there either. So, that's how you do that thing that I just did. A visibility check for things like widgets and health bars. So if you had health bars, you could apply it to that as well, and it'd be nice and easy to add because we did it in a component. You could just drop it in the blueprint. All right, see ya.